Hey guys, Kev here, and I have a overview kind of video to do for you. So um, I want to be honest that I, I actually got this today. <laughs> so, you know, overview is a, a good way to put it. It's definitely not a full review of any kind. But um, I picked it up at the P.O. Box today, and I don't know. I just felt like sharing. I didn't do an unboxing because I uh, picked it up on my way home from work. I had to go pick up my kid, and I just, uh, you know, I didn't have time. And I was excited to get it out of the box because um, this is a knife that I saw on Instagram, and I wanted to check out. You know, it's a little different than stuff I usually uh, review and, and all that kind of jazz. But, I don't know, it just stood out to me. I've been really enjoying uh, Tiguas designs. I know I'm, I don't know how to say it, so, you know. Um, but I've been really enjoying his designs with Cabell knives. Uh, I'll show you the one that I own, which is the Denka this is one of my favorite knives, if not my favorite knife this year. And that uh, thumb square just takes a minute to get used to if you haven't uh, handled it in a minute, which I haven't because I'm waiting on my slip to show up. But uh, I really love this uh, knife. This is, like I said, one of my favorite knives this year. And he has uh, two or three knives now with Cabell knives. Check them out. And he also has a few designs with Kubi. And uh, this is one of them. He also, I believe, has worked with CMB and some other folks. So um, he is quickly becoming one of those uh, designers that uh, has a lot of uh, knife designs out there. Not necessarily uh, a maker or anything that I know of, um, but just has a unique design language that honestly does not necessarily translate to every knife. And that's something I like, you know, uh, it, it's not a negative when a maker or designer has a language and all their knives look the same, but, um, you just don't, you can't just look at a knife and go, Oh, that's a Tiguous design, right? You can, in some sense, when you see something kind of crazy, you can be like, oh, that, that's probably a Tiguous design. And I mean that as a compliment. Um, but, you know, I don't look at this knife and go, that's a, you know, that's one of his designs. Um, but it is. And, and I think that's cool that he just has, he just goes for different stuff. And, and it's unique. And I enjoy that. So, anyway, this is the Kubi Akino. A-K-I-N-O. Akino. This is a budget model uh, in my eyes. This is uh, $70. I just looked on their website. I don't know what it'll be at retailers. Could be less, could be more. I don't know how Kubi rolls like that. But, you know, we're talking about uh, G10 slabs over proud liners, a tail lock design, which we're going to get into, which is the unique thing on here, and 14C, 28N, and I believe this is a stone wash, not a bead blast. Looks like a, a heavier stone wash. Um, so all of that for $70, mm, I don't know. Um, not horrible or anything, but it does seem, you know, a little pricey. But you know what? 14C, do I care? Not really. But the people who are diehard budget fans are going to probably think this should be like 55 bucks. You know, um, so you could have that argument. I mean, it's very square and flat and all that, but they do have a designer involved, so you got to keep that in mind. Um, right off the bat, I'll just answer one of your questions. You cannot reverse flick this. Um, this is sort of meant, I think, to be mostly a two-hand knife. You can slow roll it out, um, but it is pretty hard to close one-handed. You got to climb all the way down here. Kind of push, give it a little shake, and then it gets a little scary, as you just saw, and then come back up and close it. So I think it's meant to be a two-hander, uh, but, you know, it is dead nut centered. So let's talk about the aesthetics. I, I think it's an interesting looking knife. It's definitely not my aesthetic, right? I definitely like things um, that have more curvature to them, you know. Uh, here's one of my favorites, the Evo 2.0. Um, here's one of my own designs with Colin, the, the stout, um, you can see sort of a pattern, which again is kind of what I was saying before, 
you know, um, we sort of have a design language. It's not necessarily like every knife is the same or anything, but um, we do have similarities in our designs. But I'm not a big fan of straight, super straight lines like that. Um, so it's not really my cup of tea in that sense. And then the flat scales, you know. Um, I do like a, a drop point blade, straight back blade. I would call it a drop point because it does come down a little bit. That uh, blood groove, I would call it, not a fuller, because in this case, it does come to the end. And basically, a blood groove means you could poke somebody and the blood would, you know, it would travel all the way through um where a fuller i think you could call something a fuller when it doesn't come out of the blade here at the end if that makes sense it's in there um i don't know if that made any sense but you get my point um you know you got the tail lock system here which is down here it's basically a back lock uh much like Here's a Spider Code Native 5, another example of something that's got more curves and, and a rounded nature to it. This is what I would call a back lock. Um, you know, you might be able to get away with calling this a mid lock. Um, there's a lot of terms for these things that are arbitrary and people just say whatever. Um, but essentially, tail lock means it's down here. Um, you could maybe just call this a back lock. Um, a tail lock maybe has to come all the way to the end. I'm not sure. I'm going to call it a tail lock. And then a back lock is obviously where the lock is on the back. So you could technically call any of them a back lock. And it's a type of back lock is the tail lock. But you have a mid, a mid back lock. Then you have like a forward back lock. And then you have like the tail lock, if that makes sense. Um, and we'll talk about the differences in a second. But you can see right here how easy it is for me to one hand manipulate this knife because one, I have this choil to hide under and two, I have enough space or the lock is far enough up that I can actually reach it easily and get there where on this knife, it's all the way down here and I don't have any kind of choil to hide behind. So I got to shake, right? And my move is to just get it far enough to where it starts moving and then climb up and get it, right? Now, you'll see this knife right here does not have a half stop. It just, right, travels around, pops and locks in either location. This opens, boom, hits a half stop. Hits a half stop. You can see this area right here. When it gets to that, boom, it kind of, a half moon and the uh, spring kind of drops in part of the way. Um not quite all the way like it does when closed or open right um so yeah you have a half stop it's very interesting um uh, it's a unique feeling um and i actually kind of like it and um I do, i'm not sure why but i do um so yeah we talked about aesthetics um ergonomics this is where the knife uh, does not shine for me. This is where I have my biggest gripe with the knife. This is my black cherry boiling soda. It's really good. Um, so the ergos, I switched the clip over to lefty so I could get the normal feel for it that you would as a righty, or if you're a lefty like me, that you would. And this clip is a brutal, um, this clip is just owning my palm, like, uh, squeeze down. Oh my God, that hurts. Uh, I mean, it is jabbing the sh out of me, right? I mean, look how far that, that, that stands off the scale. And then you have no contouring to the scale or the clip. It just really sucks. It does. If I hold it in this hand, it's not so bad because it's flat. I don't have that clip there. Now, of course, I feel the clip here. So either way, it's really not good. Um, you would not want to spend more than 10 seconds cutting something with this, at least with maximum pressure, right? If you're just holding it like this and slicing through something for EDC, you're fine, right? Is it the end of the world? No, but I will say it is an absolute hot spot. This clip is atrocious. Um, they needed to do some kind of a flat 
clip design, something, uh, a wire clip would have worked here really well. Um, but that just stands off too much for me. Now, other than that, which is a big negative for me, um, you can choke up because you have this flat right here. You can choke up like this and get behind the blade. You can get into pinch grips. It's very flat and straight here. So it's not like great for it, but you can do it. Um, utility cutting is not going to be great because that belly goes up to the tip, but you can reach up and do these kind of moves. Um, it is a relatively thin grind. I mean, I cut some paper before this, so I'm again, I, I don't have a ton of experience, but it's not the thinnest stock. It's also not the thickest stock. It's not the thinnest grind. It's also not the thickest grind. It felt it felt like it had a little bit of trouble getting through the paper. And you can see this almost has like a mirror edge on it from factory. So it's not that it's not sharp. It's plenty sharp, guys. I mean, it's sticky sharp. It just kind of was, uh, you know, dragging through the paper a little bit. And I think it's just maybe a little bit thick behind the edge. Um, so there's that. Um, so we talked about Ergo's action, kind of cutting again, overview. Um, so let's kind of talk about this half stop a little bit, right? And how do you fidget with this? Because, you know, that's going to be a big question. You can't reverse flick it, right? You just, I mean, I, I can't get enough power on it to get through the half. It'll get to half, but that's dangerous, right? You can one hand it if you dig into this fuller, if you have the clip on the, on the right side for your hand, but... I mean, it starts to slip out of my hand when I do that, and then I almost slip out, and it's a little dangerous. So you can kind of one-hand it to the half, and then one-hand it open. And then you can kind of do this. I would use something like a table and just kind of do that. And I see it's scary when it hits that half, and then you pop it down. So you can one-hand this, but it's a little sketch, right? Um the two hand is man it's almost slip joint like because of that half stop it really is like a slip joint with a weak spring and uh, a lock so just for reference i'm carrying my kvist blade works vanish today just got these in so i'm carrying these and sorry i used this right before um You'll see on this, I'll open it to half, open it to all the way. And then when I want to go to close it, I just push to half, push to close, right? So open, close. So that's a slip joint. Well, this doesn't have many more steps, honestly. You just half, open. And then you just got to give this guy a little push. And you're back to half and you're close. And I was sitting there talking to my wife earlier, just hammering away with this thing. And it was kind of fun, honestly, doing this. Now, I will note that I noticed if you push this all the way in, the um, blade will jump the half stop. So you don't have to go to the half stop. You can deploy. You can just depress all the way and this thing will go right through that half stop. So maybe if you have larger hands or something like that, you might be able to pull off some kind of tail switch closing motion where you can get it to swing all the way closed. I can't do that. Um, I just push here like this and do this. This is my move right here. I just, I like slip joint, so it's fine with me. I can just two hand it like a slip joint, you know, just has a weaker spring. So you know, it, it's a very interesting knife to me. Um, I think it's cool. I like what it's doing, you know. I like that it's different. Um, it's just unique to me. And um, I actually, have, Colin and I have been talking for a while now about doing a tail lock. Um, we think it's a cool idea as well if it's, you know, um, executed properly, you know. I think... I don't know the way to go about it. Is the way to go about it to do no half stop and make it like flickable, kind of like he did on the tonic design? Or do we go traditional and just pretend it's a slip joint and add a little tail lock on it? 
so the folks who want a locking knife can get that but you still have that almost full slip joint feel to it you know um i'm kind of partial to that idea but i mean we haven't gotten too far with it um we kind of just like slip joints you know it, it's probably better to just go with a slip joint um but this should be legal in a lot more places because of this that's another thing i wanted to mention is i think that part of making this knife and this design was to appeal to the european market like in germany um you know one hand opening and closing is kind of like a, a, a legal issue and i think this would probably fall into a two-hand category because of this you know it's kind of hard to two hand close or one hand close so i think it might work um technically you can roll it out but i don't know i think it would pass the test probably so this would be a cool knife in Europe where, you know, you still get a lot of fidget factor and all that goodness, but you get a clip and you get, you know, a locking knife. Um, so, yeah, those are my thoughts on the Aquino. I, I think maybe the price point is a touch high. Um, I think the uh, clip is an absolute nightmare in terms of hot spot. There's just no way around that. I mean... I, I, yeah, I gotta call it like I see it and that's it's just bad it really is because of such a straight and flat knife that it, it just stands out you know you are you already are gonna contend with ergonomic uh, and an ergonomic downfall on this knife being a freaking rectangle right so you add to that this clip that sticks this far off the handle it's just what's gonna happen you know um, they could have tried to inset it a little bit and that would have lowered it down a little bit. I think that would have helped, honestly. And I think for that $70 price point, yeah, that might've been ideal. Um, you know, this seems like something they last year would have sold for 50 bucks. Um, proud liners, proud clip, you know, the 14 C is where it gets bumped up. A little bit instead of d2 which i'm glad they did you know um but yeah one other gripe i have this is a weird one and it's not really a big deal but i, I it, Civivi does this too i hate when they do these reversible clips where this screw is a standoff screw which is great right i love that it's reversible but they always make this a freaking t8 like and these are t6s just make them all T8 for the love of Pete, right? Um, or make this a T6. Because I went to, you know, you go to flip the clip, you get your T6 out because you have to. You undo these and then you go, oh, let me, you know, get this out. And you're like, ah, oh, shit, it's a T8. And then you switch back. You you undo the T8 and you're like, all right, let me put the clip in. So you go to put the clip in and then you're like, ah, oh, I got to grab my T6 again. And you go grab your T6. You put your in. It's just like, come on, give me one damn screw for that um, or one damn bit. You know, I, not everything has to be T8, okay? I'll concede that, even though I wish it was all T8. At least make that a T6, too. Like, it's almost like they're appealing to us with the T8, but it's like, you're just making it hard on me, you know? Um, I get it. Most right-handed people are like, I'm glad that's a T8, you know? I get it, so. Uh, yeah, I think it's cool. I think it's worth checking out. Um, what was that? Just felt something like move. Oh, it was the clip. Clip doing a little bendy. Um, yeah, I think it's worth checking out if you're into back locks or slip joints. And, and you know, um, I think it's really unique and different um, in a world of a lot of the same. So that's kind of been my theme with uh, his designs um is the you know they're kind of different he does different stuff different locking mechanism different deployments um stuff like that and it's cool so uh that is the kubi aquino let me know what you guys think down below currently uh this is only available at their website and i think knife global which i believe is their website as well so I'll link that if these become available elsewhere in the meantime before i post this video i will link uh other stuff as well but um yeah they sent this to me to review uh, i don't know if i pointed that out so take what i say with a grain of salt Ooh, almost got myself um but yeah 
you know, uh, it is what it is. So, love you guys. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you later.